You're listening to Packers Talk Network. Packers Talk. Do you want to experience the thrill of a Packers game at Lambeau Field? If so, be sure to get your game tickets from the longtime trusted source in Wisconsin, Ticket King. Visit their locations in Milwaukee and Green Bay, or just go to their website, theticketking.com. Again, that's theticketking.com. Hi, this is Jerry Kramer, and you're listening to The Sweep. Looked like Aaron Rodgers pulled out a little too quick. All right, here we go, fellas. Let's have a little fun today. I feel like we can run the table. Oh, I have sizzle. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another beautiful, beautiful episode of The Sweep. I am your host, Fred Thurston. And I got to be honest, folks, I'm out here as a single host tonight. Uh, no Blaine. Uh, we love you, Blaine. But we are luckily blessed to have on the mic with us Mr. Thane Getz, the newest writer for Pack to the Future. And my man, you have been straight killing it with the drafting and the scouting reports. Kind of making me a little nervous about my job here. But uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, what you're all about, where we can find you on Twitter. And... Uh, all that goodness. I'm saying Gats, you know, like he said, uh, I just started writing for Pack to the Future here a couple weeks ago, big into the draft. You know, I've I've been a Packers fan since probably like four years old, growing up in Nebraska of all places. But yeah, you know, I'm really excited to write for Pack to the Future and this is my first podcast. I'm ready to give it a whirl. And growing up in Nebraska, that's pretty intense. Uh I grew up uh, obviously, obviously in Wisconsin, a big Cornhusker fan. I've always enjoyed watching them play. I like the the old school feel of Nebraska football. Uh, it's been one of the things I've enjoyed. Plus, growing up so watching, actually, you, can, you identify <laughs> yourself as a Husker fan. Uh, partly. Uh, I can't. I can't confirm neither or deny that because I may get in trouble with certain people. Um, but growing up watching Eric Crouch was. Uh, it was pretty fun to see a, a white quarterback just run all over the college football. Um, that was, I'll never forget it. Uh, he was one of my favorites. And then when the Packers actually brought him in, that, that blew my mind. So um, it was one of those cool moments seeing one of your your childhood uh, favorites come to your, your home team. So um, Yes, he, but, I, I remember when Brandon Jackson when Brandon Jackson got drafted to Green Bay, everybody in Nebraska was all excited. Same with you know everybody liked him on Green as well. So, yep, we got good, some uh, you got some supporters. Good, I like to hear that. I think uh, the Packer fans, Packer Nation, is, is runs pretty deep. So, um, well, we're excited to have you on. Excited to listen. Excited to hear about what you think about a few guys. Uh, I know we're going to focus on some of the. The first round guys, but uh, tonight is is mostly uh, dedicated to a mini episode of the sweep, which means we're shooting for about a thirty minute show, which will most likely end up being an hour. Uh, so just get over it, people. This is what this is what it's about. We're talking draft now, and I know I can't ever stop talking about it. I know you probably can't. I know my wife probably wishes I would. Um, but this is that time of the year where that's pretty much all I think about and it consumes me. So there is no time limit, uh, for me personally on this, but if we can try and maybe keep it to 30 minutes, um, yeah, it's not going to happen. But speaking of the draft, quick little news here for the sweep. We are back this year with our awesome, awesome sponsors ground round again. Um, and we're kicking it right off hard with them. Full fledged draft party. Uh, the first night of the draft in Nina. It's going to be huge. Uh, free wings all night long. I'm going to be throwing up Pride and Glory gear. Um, and plus, we have full draft analysis by yours truly uh, after each pick live at the bar. So come on out, spend some money, learn some stuff about the draft, have some fun, do all that good stuff. Um, it's going to be great. So thank you again to Ground Round for picking us up for another year. You guys are amazing. You guys have made my dreams come true. What can I say? Um, but no more sappy stuff. No more sponsor talk. Let's get into it. 
Thane, now you are down officially to only 20 minutes to talk. No, I'm kidding. You can have as much as you want. But I want to hear it. You started off the five guys that the Packers should target in the first round. What do you got? All right. Well, you know, this obviously this is a list of realistic guys. You know, I'm not going to say like, oh, we should grab Miles Garrett with the 29th pick. But, you know, number one, we'll start off. I really like Gary and Connolly out of Ohio State, you know, and re- he just fills in so well. I mean, outside, he plays great pet press man. He goes, you know, this this defense has been lacking speed for a long time, and the guy runs a 4.4440 time. He had the third best three cone time of any cornerback. You know, he's just, you know, what you're getting with him in terms of man coverage. He's not great against the run, but he's six foot, 195, good, solid press man corner, and I think he'd be great in the Packers system. Well, to be fair, I don't think any cornerback is really good against the run. Um, I've seen a, a good number of them usually get their butts handed to them. Uh, there's, it, there's some rare ones in there. Yeah, there's a couple of good ones. I, it's, it's, hard to, couple. It's, hard to, it's hard to argue that because uh, he's got good size. He's versatile. Press man, fantastic. We obviously know that that is a, a need. That is a uh, you have to have. It's a prerequisite to play for the Packers. Um, and as for, you know, lacking speed, yeah, I mean, when you lose Sam Shields, you just lose speed. I mean, bottom line. Um, I think when you talk about defensive backs, uh, talk about just our secondary in general, a lot of questions, a lot of concerns. Um, for me personally, I'm not as high on the concerns as some people. I mean, some people were calling for, for just straight blitzkrieg. It was all over. Everything was going to happen. I just I can't imagine that Rollins and Randall don't come back a little stronger next year and and healthier. Um, obviously losing Sam Shields for for the the long haul is rough. Mike Hyde obviously very rough. Um, so yeah, corner is obviously something we need to address. That would be a great one. I would be all right with it. No arguments there. Yeah, and you mentioned Sh- Sam Shields. You know, I just think that. In Dom Capers' system, you you saw like in 2015 when he came back from that concussion, you looked at how well the defense improved and like what they could do having that guy that they could put on an island, that speedy guy that could cover one number number one receivers without help. You know that's that's just huge for the defense. I think absolutely, and that's you know me and Blaine were talking in our last episode about how. You know, is there anyone out there that we could even pick up in free agency and then not have to 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 spend that first round pick on a corner? And you know, someone like Darrell Revis fits the mold perfectly. Now, I don't know if his speed is even close to being what it was. It probably isn't. Obviously, isn't. But you know, him being such a great press man guy, uh, I think he would have been fantastic. You look at the defense right now. Uh, the two pickups on the defensive line, one being today, that was that helps, and I think that takes away a, a bigger need, um, and it just puts more pressure on getting a corner in the draft. Oh, absolutely. All right, who do you got number more. two? Okay, number two, you know, I'm going to stick with cornerback here, Marlon Humphrey from Alabama. The guy, another quick guy, 4.41, another fat one guy, you know, another guy who's super aggressive and press. Like I've seen him on tape, he'll drive his guy straight out, of, straight onto the sideline, you know, but he does, he does get beat sometimes in man coverage, which is kind of, which is kind of why I put Gary and Connolly ahead of him because I think Gary and Connolly is kind of a more solid press man guy, but Marlon Humphrey is, outstanding in zone coverage and he's better against the run so you know i just think that those both of those two are would be great additions you know not to i mean it's kind of i guess uh i could have thrown it to an edge rusher there but i really like both of those guys i was really torn between the two of them like i had i started out wanting to put my own humphrey first but i ended up putting conley first but either of those two would be great. And another speed guy, you know, not to be repetitive, but. No, I think, uh, I think you're good there. 
Marlon Humphrey, the thing with, I've seen him go pretty high in a lot of drafts. It seems like he has kind of moved his way up into being maybe the one, two, or even three best corner in a lot of people's mock drafts. So I, it concerns me as whether or not he would be available there. Um, now, if he is available there, I, I, I think you almost have to go with him. Um, you know, he's he's shown throughout his career that he's got the potential. Um, the only thing that worries me is is Alabama in just general with their secondary is so half and half. It, it's hit and miss, it seems like. You know, you can get a guy like Haha Clinton Dix who yeah. looks like he's going to be a perennial all pro, and then you get guys like D. Yeah, D. Milner, who was so highly touted and, and, and just hasn't really done much. Uh, same with, like, a Drake or Patrick. Uh, not saying that his career has been terrible or anything like that, but, you know, these were guys that came out. I You follow the draft. You you know how it is. They were pretty highly touted corners coming out, and they just haven't done it. So that concerns me. I know that it's unfair to, to just lump him in with everybody else, but... Um, yeah, if he was available at 29, uh, the way he plays, his, his size, I think that's something that our secondary lacks big time at the corner position is size. Obviously, uh, Rollins and Randall, both not even, I don't think, a clip six feet. Um, you know, I, I just, I think it would be nice to have a big, strong, a size fast corner. Movie. Yeah, for sure. So, um yeah, I like it. Uh, I like it. It's all, that's all I can say. It's good. Yeah, you know, and, and with that, like, it seems like every year for me, when I look at it, some player that I think there's going to be, there's just no way that they're going to be there when we pick. It ends up that they're there. And I would, as an example, haha, ha Clinton Dix, I thought, I didn't think there was any way that he would have been there when we picked, but he was, and that was who I thought they would pick, and they did, you know, and Last year, you know, Reggie Ragland was another guy that I thought, you know, he's not going to be there, but he was. They didn't pick him, but he was there. So you just never know with these guys, really. And I've seen Marlon Humphrey. I think I saw last week somebody from NFL.com had him in a five-round mock draft. They had him mock to us in the second round, which I thought was crazy. Wow. But, you know, wow. if he's there in the second round, that'd be amazing. But <laughs> Yeah, if we could pick up him in the second, I would I would say full success for the draft without a doubt. Ted could literally call it a day and just bounce out. Um, you're right though. It, it's it's the beauty of the draft. I mean, I've seen guys slip. I've seen guys go way too early. Uh, you know, it, it's just what it is, and that's what makes it so much fun. Um, but you're right. You know it. These corners could drop. These corners could go big. I think with the way the league is and being so pass heavy, you're just going to see more corners being taken because more teams need to field three to four good ones, if not th- yeah. three to four great ones, just to, to match up. I mean, teams are lining up three, four wide on a regular basis. And, you know, back in the day, you had one great one and then two pretty okay ones. Now you have to have at least two great ones. Um, so I think, you know, you're just going to see more corners going in the first and second and, and definitely more corners being reached for. Um, but with your two, I, I think those are two that are probably the most safe of the, the, the top corners out there. I mean, Lattimore, I think, is is a beast. I think he's for sure gone early. Um, you know, Sidney Jones, yeah, Jones out of Washington. Um, I think he's probably going to be the best one out of the entire group. I think, again, he'll be gone. And then after that, you have the options of Conley, uh, you know, and Dory Jackson at USC, um, you know, the Florida corners, uh, Wilson and Tabor. I mean, there's there's a bunch. There's a ton of corners. I've said it in previous podcasts. This draft just sits perfect with all of our needs. Uh, it's just deep in and corners. You have to think one of them's going to fall off. Yeah, I mean, one of them, if not two of them, could pot- potentially go. And and you know, honestly, God, Ted could go back to back on corner, and it's happened before. So, um, yeah, wouldn't be the first. Time. <laughs> wouldn't be the first time, and it wouldn't surprise me because that's just what Ted does. Ted likes to uh, keep you on your toes. So, um, yeah, I love the two first picks. What do you got for uh, the third one? 
All right. Well, for number three, I got Derek Burnett. Barnett, excuse me, Edge yeah. from Tennessee. You know, I know that you're really high on him. Uh, you know, my take on the guy is, you know, he's just a really pro-ready guy. You saw he has as many snaps as anybody at that position. Like, he, he's he been so successful, too, with all of his, you know, All-American, All-SEC stuff. And, you know, one kind of a knock on him is, you know, he ran a 4.88. 40 yard dash time, which isn't like super fast, but he is, he's six foot three, 260 pounds. So, you know, he's, he's got some size and he did well in the agility drills, but just really a pro ready guy. And you see, you see those pictures on Twitter and things of him getting off the ball, like ridiculously faster than the rest of the offensive line and defensive line. You always see that. I think he'd, you know, he'd come in there and you'd be able to put him, in as a pass rusher right away and yeah that's another guy that you never know if he's going to be there or not but if he is that'd be a great pick definite ted guy he's a ted thompson type guy to the t um you kind of mentioned it um I, i am high on the guy i think for i don't know what it is i don't know if it's uh necessarily a statistical thing or if it's just a gut thing but I just I love him. I love his size. Uh, he's NFL ready. He's he's got a stout build to him. Versatile. Uh, I think he you know he just has those traits. Uh, he'd be a great you know three four outside linebacker. Um, you you mentioned his burst off the ball. It is it's quite incredible. Um, you know he's had you know, three years at Tennessee. Averaged uh, at least ten sacks, ten or more sacks each year. Um, just productive, you know. He's just he gets it done. He's been getting it done. He, he, I, I think, I think of all those guys. I mean, obviously you have Miles Garrett. You know, you have your your Solomon Thomas, your Taco Charlton. You know, these are these great DNs. Again, a deep class. But I think when you look at it, really, really narrow it down. You know, Barnett's one of those guys that fits in the top three. You know, the kind of guy that we we're going to talk about three, four, five, six years from now as being one of the better picks, um, which concerns me, and and I I hope that he falls to us. Uh, And if he does, I I will be a very, very happy man, because I think he's great. Um, You know, I know a big concern is the fact that we have, you know, Matthews and Perry already on the outside there, but we need someone to come in and kind of reboost this defense on that part, and someone young, someone a little cheaper, too. Because we're spending way too much money on those two guys. Well, I mean, depth is going to be an issue, you know, this year after losing what Peppers and and Jones. Those were two big and big guys, you know. And I I just think Barnett, you know, he he would just roll right in there and he'd be able to play right away. I think, you know, maybe slap number fifty six on him and he could be the next Nick Barnett or whatever. Uh-huh. I don't know. I like it. Playing I like it. Good call. Instead. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, great player. For sure. All right, who do you got for the uh, fourth? All right, fourth, I'm going to go back to cornerback again. Sorry, yeah. everybody, but I got I got T.D. White out of LSU. T, he's That's another guy who can play outside corner. You know, actually, he can play inside and outside, so that's somebody who I think could really be, like, if he became an elite corner, he could really shadow somebody to where he could just follow them all over the field. That number one receiver, you know, four point four seven forty, great tackler. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you'll see him play the ball in the air like super kind of aggressively, and it'll get him into trouble. But really, that's really the biggest knock on him, as far as I'm concerned. And you know, I just. I really focus on that one need, that outside corner, that long-term starter. I just think that 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 is going to help the defense more than anything. And the and obviously the pass rush being better would help the cornerbacks and and safeties cover. But I don't know. You, I just think you need to have that corner outside. And TD White's great corner. I like that. Um, you're right. I mean, I think we definitely need that. That outside guy, and I just, I'm concerned, and I, it worries me as to whether or not Ted realizes that. Um, 
you know, he when he invests in a guy, and especially in an early round guy, you know, like a Demarius Randall or even Quentin Rollins, he really puts a lot into him. And, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if he left this draft with not getting a corner and in at least the first couple, the four or five rounds. Um, that's the concerning part for me. And I think, you know, I could see fans going just ape, ape shit about it, if you will. Um, you know, I look back at what was it last year and, you know, I think our going into the draft, everyone was saying inside linebacker, inside linebacker, inside linebacker. And round one went by and round two went by and, and everyone was freaking out or maybe it was two years ago. I'm thinking of, and, um, it was last year. Was it last year? Okay, thank you. And, I think so. Um, and then we eventually got uh, Blake Martinez. And, you know, he is fantastic. And, you know, that's just... Ted could do that. You know, I think he could play the game where he doesn't draft a corner until the fifth round. We all freak out. And it ends up being someone legit. Uh, you know, as with T.D. White, total cover guy. I mean, just you know, shadow to the T, uh, follow, 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 run, run, run. Um, I like the fact that he's aggressive. I think that's something we also lack in our corners. Um, you know, there's a few other guys that you could throw in there. Um, like I said before, I think it's a really deep class. Um, ideally, I wish that Ted would go after a corner early and then pick one up again in, like, the fifth. Uh, Because I think you're getting probably third-round talent in the fifth uh, just because of how deep this class is. Um, You know, and the other thing about this class is there's a lot of size. Uh, It's not a real small class of corners in the sense of height and weight. I mean, you're looking at a lot of tall, aggressive, press-type corners. So... It's a shot in the dark. It is. I mean, you never quite know what you're getting with the corner. Uh, you have an idea. You can balance his speed. You can balance his, his you know, certain instincts. But, you know, it, it all comes down to whether or not he fits the system. And I think that Ted and, and Dom Capers working together on that um, have been quite successful with it. Uh, so I trust in them, whatever they do. And, you know, if maybe they take one of these three guys and you'll look a little smarter as well. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting you should use that uh, that inside linebacker analogy because I was thinking the exact same thing when you were talking about, oh, maybe Ted won't take one. And, you know, I've that's been one of my fears as well. You know, I just – I don't see Demarius Randall as an outside corner. He just – I don't – I don't know. I see him as more of a slot corner, and I think that – a good experiment would be trying him at safety a little bit just to see how he would do because you know he did play that in college we do need depth there and if you watched morgan burnett play middle linebacker on third down last year i mean i just i just thought that he did an outstanding job he's great against the run you know he can cover he covered tight ends really really well and i think i don't know i think that demarius randall fits there well but you got to think that he would, he's going to look hard at corner, but you know, he might want to lay off it because of that, that whole first round thing. But yeah, you know, you'll get, and like you said, you could get a really good value in like the fourth or fifth round, but who knows if he'll even pick one at all. You know, he's got, he's got what, like four or five corners on the roster that are pretty much roster locks more or less at this point. So you just never know. Yeah, and the thing with Randall that the most concerning, I think that he has all the skill in the world to be a great corner. Um, I just, the, the, his size concerns me. And, you know, there's a lot of size in receivers uh, in today's NFL. And, you know, you've got guys that are 6'3", 6'4". You've got Julio Jones type guys. you got Alshon Jeffrey type size. And, you know, I just, I can't see him matching up with them now. I'll take a minute and, and I'll give a straight shout out props to to Gunter. I think Gunter was remarkable last year, considering the circumstances. Uh, I mean, I did a 
an article about corners before the season started, and I don't think I even mentioned him. I think I might have threw him in a sentence at the last second. Um, and he went up and matched up against some of the best guys in the league last year, and he did pretty darn good. Uh, a lot of people gave him crap as if he was he went into the season as the number one. No, folks, he went into the season as the fourth, maybe even the fifth. And to end the season as the number one going against the top receivers in the NFL, uh, you know, the fact that he wasn't just getting straight murdered every game is pretty impressive. Um, the fact that he held a lot of those guys under 100 yards is simply remarkable. So I don't know if Ted puts a little stock into him. Um, and considering him as being maybe one of our more bigger, reliable guys that he can start outside and then put Rollins or put Rand on the other side of him and then put Rollins on the inside. Uh, the safety thing, it's a good idea, but Ted's not going to do it. Uh, I just don't see it happening. Um, Burnett, I, I love the idea of Burnett coming down. I'm, I'm the biggest supporter of the hybrid position in the NFL. Uh, I hope and I think that maybe Ted goes for a safety in the third, fourth round, fifth round potentially, uh, just to get depth and then to get someone to kind of, you know, mold and get ready for that role to take over for Burnett. Because you, you have to want someone to run with HaHa uh, for the next four to five years. Um, Burnett's not. Burnett's up for a contract after this year, and we all know, you know, Ted's probably not going to give him the money. Um, not for being 29 years old. It's just it's not going to happen. So you have to really genuinely consider the safety position. Um, and I think he addresses it in the draft. And, and yeah, I just don't know. I mean, <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if he didn't go for a corner in the first three, four rounds. And and Packer Nation just goes crazy, uh, you know, castrates him on Twitter and all that goodness. But we'll see. Um, I'm a huge Ted fan, so it's I'm gonna trust in in his process. And and until his process just completely fails us, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give up on him, even if he keeps no running backs in the roster. Um. <laughs> All right, go give me your number five, and then we'll cap her off. All right, number five, I'm going back to edge. I'm going to go Tack McKinley, UCLA. You know, uh, Tack McKinley, the first the first thing you think of is relentlessness with him. The guy does not quit on the pass rush at all. You know, four five nine forty, so he's a quicker guy than Barnett, but – 6'2", 250, so not super tall, but, you know, he's got that 250. He's kind of prototype size. There's one, a couple issues that come up with him is his shoulder, and he's kind of raw as well. I've seen, I've seen clips of him, like, trying to jump to bat a ball, and he's holding his shoulder when he's coming down. So, I don't know. I know that sidelined him at times, and, you know, being a little raw isn't so bad, but that means that he's not going to be like an immediate contributor like Derek Barnett, for example. But you know, um, sorry to anybody who likes TJ Watt a little bit better than Tack McKinley. I, I really debated on that. Also, I'd like to give an honorable mention to Forrest Lamp because that guy's a great p- football player, but I can't honestly say that I'd like them to pick a guard in the first round. But yeah, that's my take on Tack McKinley. So you think Ted will go back to UCLA after all of his history repeats nonsense. itself? Yes, it's just that's my biggest concern with that pick. Um, I think that, oh man, that one it just it scares me because it just screams Ted Thompson, and you know, the fact that he's from UCLA, the fact that we need that position, the fact that he's really young. I think he's like, what, 21? Um, I just, oh man, he just, he totally seems like that type of a pick. And it's just get away from UCLA, get away from USC. I feel like that's the only two teams we picked. Arizona State and other Pac-12. Yeah, I mean, it's just, he's very much in the the Pac-12. And it's kind of funny because if you look at the positions we need, a lot of them are Pac-12 uh, corners, especially too. You know, there's a lot of Pac-12 corners out there, but 
Um, I'm, you know, I'm trying to look past all that when I look at Tech. I think that, you know, he he's he's got good size. He's explosive. He's big. He's tough. He's all that goodness. Um, you know, but all I, I still I just see that, and I just I I find myself wanting to walk away from that pick so badly. I think that he will go actually before us and we won't have to really worry about it. Um, you know, being from Nebraska is good for you because you didn't take TJ Watt. Otherwise you'd have a whole lot of people chasing you down in the streets right now. Um, I think that is just, you know, I, I put him on our mock draft and, you know, I, I know a few people kind of gave me crap about it because they thought, I, I did it because he's Wisconsin. He's did it because he's a lot. No, I, I, yeah, I truly. I back of course, they weren't too pleasant, but yeah, you know. Yeah, you know, everyone wants to find a reason to try to talk um, smack about it, but you know what? Realistically, he's a great fit. He's a great position. He's a great size. He's a great everything for what we would need, and that's something that we need. So, um, it had nothing to do with that. I just think that he's good. Um, you know, uh, Forrest Lamp. Uh, <laughs> I'm not ever going to argue anyone that's got the name Forrest Lamp. Um, you know, that, it, there's just no reason and there's no place for it on the sweep. Um, I think that getting an offensive lineman is, uh, especially a guard position, is an, is an extreme must for this team. Um you know, not only just for maybe even starting, but for depth. Uh, we went last year, we had great depth. Uh, we had a great offensive line. I mean, one of the best in the league. The year before that, our depth was, was challenged, and we struggled. Um, I don't want to do that again. I don't think we should do that again. Uh, I think we have four decent tackles uh we have two great tackles and two legitimate backups i think spriggs is fantastic and potential is, is remarkable uh and then murphy um was kyle murphy out of stanford uh picked last year in like what the seventh round shocked me i couldn't believe he was still around um two good tackles then you move into the guard position and you have uh lane taylor who started all the, you know every game last year completely surprised me um and then you have don barclay who i don't trust and then at center you have Corey lindsley who i think is fantastic but last year we had lindsley we had treader we had barclay we had taylor we had you know all this depth and position uh, availability and it's just it scares me to think that we're gonna enter the year with with half of that um so i think that a guard slash center guard slash tackle guard slash anything uh, is definitely a need in the first round, though. No, um, so I'm kind of jumping the gun and going into the other rounds there. But um, yeah, I can't argue too much with what you went with. I think obviously everyone is stuck with defense, and I think for good reason. Um, thoughts on a running back? Thoughts on getting someone in the first round as a running back? You know, I know Christian McCaffrey's been a name that people have been talking about. Um, you know, anyone else? spark your mind maybe is there anyone on the offensive side of the ball that you could see the Packers taking in the first round now see yeah it was kind of hard for me to lay off a running back but like you said defense you know is it's really huge and I think that's what they should go with um you know there are some running backs I liked I really liked uh Njoku from Miami as well as the tight end before the tight end position became so strong and um you know, a running back, in terms of the first round, I I do love McCaffrey and all, but, like, I, I just think that he's the same running back as Ty Montgomery. Like, they're this – I mean, yeah, you're probably you're getting more talent with, with, uh, with McCaffrey, obviously, but I think they're kind of the same guy. You know, I think Green Bay should be looking for kind of a more of a running type of running back, not a – not a guy who's more of a receiving type guy like Montgomery or McCaffrey, but you know, later in the rounds, I really like Donta Foreman, and I don't know. I I like a lot of running backs, but I don't really like any of them in the first round. Like, I'm not a big fan of, you know, obviously Fournette's not going to be there. I'm not a big fan of the McCaffrey pick. I'm I don't really like Dalvin Field issues. Not to mention he 
you know, if they'd pick him, it'd have to be in the first round, even if he was there. So, you know, I don't really like running back in the first round. Maybe, you know, if it was, if the opportunity presented itself in the third, fourth, you know, even second round, yeah. But Joe Mixon's a pretty good running back as well. But, you know, there's off the field issues there too. And with with the pick that you'd have to spend to get him, I don't really like that opportunity either. So, yeah, I couldn't agree more with the idea on McCaffrey. Uh, I think he's fantastic. I think he's got a lot of skill. I think he's got obviously a fantastic bloodline. Um, but again, you're, it's not anything different than what you have with Ty Montgomery. And I think people um, people aren't giving Montgomery quite the credit he deserves, and, and quite you know the option to see. I, I think he's going to be a really good running back. Um, I think people look at him still with that receiver notion and don't give him the credit that he actually will be a good running back. I mean, even you just said, you know, he's kind of a more of a receiving running back. Well, it's true. I mean, he has that option. I think that's the greatest part about him is he has that versatility, but he can still run. I mean, we saw him run between the tackles. We saw him run the outside. I think he just presents a a mismatch for defenses uh, because you have to be aware that he can easily motion out and line up outside. Uh, I think if anything... The Packers need to look for, you know, someone with a little bit more size, a little bit more of your classic back. There's no one that I would be willing to really go after in the first round. Um, You know, and and this might sound really terrible, but for me, you know, I look at running backs like, screw it, get someone in the fourth or the fifth. You just got to get someone who can run and can run and and isn't just completely a, a nincompoop about how to do it. I mean. If you can find a guy who knows how to run north and south and north and south and and can read a block here and there, that's all you need. Someone who's hungry with fresh legs, and you can find that in the fourth and fifth. I mean, you can get your studs in the first and second, absolutely. But for the most part, I, I just I think it's ridiculous sometimes to go high on on a running back. Um, I have a running back in the fourth or fifth. I believe I have him in the fifth. Um, in my mock, and and I think that's where you that's where you go. That's where you got to get after him. That's where you have that extra pick, and that's where you can kind of, you know, put a little extra bulk on your offense. Um, yeah. Other than that, I don't think offensively, besides the offensive line, you're really looking at much. I think we're good on receiver. I think, uh, you know, Ted could go receiver later. Tight end, same thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, offensively, not much. Defensively. That's where the first round sticks. Um, You'd be crazy not to stay there. Um, You know, the two signings of defensive tackles, um, I think, was big. I think that really relieved any idea of us having to go after a defensive tackle or just a defensive lineman in general um, and kind of can focus more on that, that outside edge guy or corner. I think those are that's one and two, however you want to look at it. Um you got to go with with one or the other. So um, I'd say great, great choices. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't be mad with either of or any of them, I should say. Um, You know, it'll be interesting. Uh, It'll be interesting to see what Ted actually does and and where this team goes and and how uh, how he attacks the draft this year. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, like, like I said, you know, I like McCaffrey. I have no disrespect to his running style. I just, you know, we, I just see so much of Ty Montgomery in him that I can't really see it at number 29. I just think there's so much more need there in other positions. Like, I don't know. But, yeah, I, I completely agree. With the fourth, fifth round thing, that's that's yeah. very true, and this is a very deep class. And you see every year, you see that guy that gets picked in the fourth or fifth round. That's a rookie that just tears it up, you know. Yeah. So and that's the we saw thing. Jordan Howard this year. Yeah, for sure, and that's that's just how it is. I mean, you'll get your Ezekiel Elliotts, and you'll get your you know Adrian Petersons and guys like that who get drafted in the first round and are great. Um, you know, but. <laughs> For the most part, yeah. I mean, if we didn't have Montgomery, I would be all about McCaffrey. I mean, that's exactly who I wanted. And if you look back at even last year, uh, before the year started, when we had Eddie Lacy and Ty Montgomery was a receiver, I wanted McCaffrey. Beginning of the year, that's that's who I wanted because that's 
I wanted that scat back type that could could you know motion out and could catch the ball out of the backfield and could be that crazy mismatch, you know. And I think Ty Montgomery's that. We don't have to pay him crazy amount of money. Um, I don't expect him to really want that, and uh, we don't have to waste a pick on it. So it's kind of perfect, and I think we we can spend that fourth or fifth on a little bit of a of your your classic back to kind of complement him, um, you know, or bring in Legarrette Blount from from New England and, and we'll just solve that issue right there. Um but yeah, so thank you. Thank you for being on. Thank you for letting us know your your top five. Uh if you want to come back on in a couple of weeks, maybe do round two. Um otherwise shoot, we don't even have a couple of weeks. We got the draft in three weeks. So um yeah we enjoyed it. Thank you for being on. Um why don't you let us know again one more time where we can find you on Twitter. Yeah, it's been a pleasure to be on. Uh, yeah, I did forget to mention my Twitter earlier. My Twitter is at track on tack. You can re- you can tweet at me there. You know, I'm always tweeting out my content, my opinions on things. Not that anybody wants any of those, but <laughs> that's where I'm at. Yes, and make sure and check him out on packtothefuture.com. Um, he has been just drilling out awesome, awesome scouting reports. Um, so make sure you guys check that out. Check them out. Read them. Uh, that way, if you don't know anything about the draft, at least you can go to your draft party and sound like you know a little something. Um, and make sure and check out prideandglory63.com. Uh, a couple new t-shirts, one representing Fuzzy's Old Bar shenanigans. Uh, they'll be back with us again for another year, as always, Pride and Glory. And, uh... You can check us out at the sweep underscore PTTF on Twitter. Otherwise, check us out on the Facebook page at the sweep. Uh, we'll be coming in every week now with new shows before the draft. And then we got the season started. So can't wait. Thane, uh, appreciate it. And uh, we'll hopefully have you on again. Sounds fantastic. All right, go back home. Just look inside.